Welcome to It's Not Crazy, It's Science. Today's lesson is called Water in the Air, and there are two ways to look at that title. First, water can be in the air, just like I'm holding this glass of ice water in the air. Secondly, water can become part of the air. Here's what I mean. Both the liquid water and the solid water as ice are surrounded by the air of this room, so it is in the air. But neither the liquid water or the ice are part of the air. The only way that can happen is if the water turns into a gas, also known as water vapor. However, while I've been talking, some water was sure to have evaporated, and some small part of the liquid water I started this video with has become part of the air. The only issue is I can't point to it and show you. Why? Because water vapor is invisible. In order to better understand how water enters and exits the air, I will be talking about relative humidity, evaporation, condensation, dew point, and the three states of water. Basically, we'll explore how water disappears into the air and then reappears out of the air. But let's explore some of those key terms first. Relative humidity is a percentage of water vapor in the air and is determined by how hot the air is. Hotter air can hold more water vapor than colder air can. The word humidity is Latin for moisture. And the word relative means that it relates to something else. Another way of understanding the word relative is that it means it is dependent on the situation. Because the word relative is such a strong science word and its root is used in other science words like correlation and relationship, I'd like to plunge in a bit further and really analyze this word deeply. So. Let's go to our relative humidity expert. Bubba? Albert Einstein, in his theory of special relativity, determined that the laws of physics are the same for all non-accelerating observers. And he showed that the speed of light within a vacuum is the same no matter the speed at which an observer travels. Now, for some of you, that may not have made much sense, but what Bubba said made logical sense. But depending on who heard it, it may have been quite confusing. That's exactly what relative means. For a class of sixth graders, Bubba's statement was probably quite challenging to digest, relatively difficult to digest. But for a rocket scientist, that statement was relatively easy. It all depends on who or what the statement relates to. Evaporation is the process of water changing from liquid to gas. You can see the word vapor hiding inside and the ending of A-T-I-O-N indicates that it is a process. Other definitions include to cause to disappear. Condensation is the process of water vapor changing into liquid or solid. In this word, you can see the word dense. And when this happens, particles get closer together. And again, it is a process because of the A-T-I-O-N ending. Dew point is the temperature that condensation occurs. This makes sense because this literally says the point when dew forms. Dew is liquid water appearing from the air. And that is exactly what condensation is. As water evaporates and joins the air, relative humidity increases. As water condenses and comes out of the air, relative humidity decreases. Humidity is always relative because the percentage depends on the temperature of the air. Hotter air has more room for water and can hold more. 
This makes sense because hotter air is more spread out and provides more space, whereas cold air contracts and provides less room. Therefore, cold air can hold less water vapor. The only way for water to disappear and become part of the air is to evaporate and become a gas. And the only way for water vapor to become visible again and come out of the air is to condense. If water vapor condenses, it can either appear as liquid water or solid water, which would be ice or snow. A good rule, if you can see water, it's a solid or liquid. If you can't see it, it has become a gas. I'd like to think of myself as a scientist because I'm always looking for opportunities to see science in action. And when I saw these sprinklers, I couldn't help but think of relative humidity. A common misconception is that clouds and fog are gases. And the misconception makes sense because we've seen other gases move like that. But to become a gas, water becomes so thin and less dense that it disappears. In this video, water is spraying out as a liquid but some parts are spread so thin that the droplets of water appear as a mist. Look at how wispy and buoyant some areas are. In slow motion, it looks like clouds. That's what clouds are. Tiny droplets of water floating in the sky, not water vapor. This mist is like the stage between liquid changing to gas and if the particles keep spreading apart, they will disappear and add to the relative humidity percentage. Relative humidity is a powerful measurement that allows us to determine how much water vapor is in the air. And this can help meteorologists predict cloud formation and other weather related events. Einstein's theory of relativity is a bit more complicated. But the next time you bump into a rocket scientist, strike up a conversation about relative humidity. On that topic, I'm sure you'll both be able to relate. And remember, it's not crazy, it's science.